Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be reviewing finally we finally came back to Secrets of Sulphur Springs season 3 episode 5 called Time Waits for No One and I just want to get first things first I just want to say is that you're probably going to notice I shaved my mustache I mean I kind of have like a 5 o'clock shadow I guess is what people it's called and, and um I also um, shaved my uh, beard mostly. And um, yeah, I think it's kind of like a, <laughs> I don't want to say the end of an era, but it's kind of is. But it's like, I don't remember exactly when my mustache actually started to get like whiskers and stuff. Like when it like started to grow first when I was like in middle school. So I'm assuming like it was 13, but it could have been 14. But let's just say like I was 13 and it's like seventh grade. So, like, like, I'm 21 right now, so. Eight years. Like, I, of course, I, like, trimmed my mustache and stuff like that, but I never, like, shaved it off. Like, like mostly. It's been eight years. And I decided to shave it off well i mean it was kind of like an accident at first because i just kind of wanted to trim it but i wanted to do it with a racer instead of scissors i don't know just to try something new like you know, like, you know just to see if i can do it with a racer but then it ended up being uneven so that that's like the story and then i shaved it off and i was like i wonder how i would look kind of i was kind of kind, kind of thinking so yeah eight, eight years and obviously i haven't been doing eight years on youtube so you actually couldn't have seen of what I would look like without a mustache at first. So, I guess this is like your first time seeing, kind of. So, um, anyway. Besides that. We are finally here. We are finally in the second half of season three. Of the last season of Secrets of Sulphur Springs. We have finally made it. And I'm planning on finishing the season this week. And because I did a community post of my calendar, I'm going to start doing a calendar now for each week to where the, if I have a, it doesn't matter, if, if I have a review, if I have a trailer review, a trailer reaction, a movie review, or, or a short, or a mini review, or a channel update, or a monthly update, or, or, or a souvenir episode, or one of those um, Backpack Buddy videos, whatever it is. As long as it's like a no video type of thing, or if I'm under the weather, I'm not gonna put in the calendar like I'm under the weather, I'm sick. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put down the calendar. Just it's too depressing. I, I don't I don't want to do that. But anything else, I'm gonna put it on the calendar. So I I'm not just gonna say like even though there, if you've been a child long enough, you know that there is like a chance to where something could happen, and like I end up doing like something else or. Like, the video will come out later in the day or, like, the next day due to who knows what. Like, due to who did it. If you've been in my channel long enough, like, you would know this. <laughs> like, come on, you, you would know this. But I think the channel, uh, the, the calendar for the channel helps solidify the week. And I honestly think this is going to be a good thing. This is, like, one of, like, the, like, updates. Like, you know, of, like, a milestone type of thing. So... Yeah, kind of like starting the community posts and stuff like that and start doing mini reviews for, for like reviews and stuff like that, movies. Yeah, so I think this is going to be a good upgrade. So hopefully you guys like it. And hopefully, because I put in the community posts and like on, on the bottom, so as they put in the comments in case you guys can't see anything. If the color makes the words blurry or the words are not big enough, I tried to make it as visible as I can. So please, if you can't see it, Please put it in the comments. Put in the comments of this video. Put the comments in the community because that would definitely not be put made for kids. So you can put as many comments as you want, as long as it's appropriate. So please put it put it in the comments, like and just, just in case, because I want you guys to be able to see it, because that's one of the points. So you guys know what I'm gonna be doing during the week. So yeah, I'm planning on doing episode five today, episode six tomorrow on Wednesday, episode seven on Friday, the mini review for the series finale slash season finale. Of Secret Silver Springs season three episode eight, it's gonna be the mini review for that. It's going to be on Saturday, yes, because that's what I have in the calendar. But unfortunately, I can't couldn't get like the whole week of the calendar. Like be Sundays, I get the is before Monday on my calendar in particular. I don't know why. This is how it is. Well, 
I guess that's actually in all counts because I'm looking at this one right here. I'm my Harry Potter one. Um, so yeah, Sunday's actually usually in the left anyway. But anyway, no, nonetheless, nonetheless, Sunday's cut off. So on Saturday, you would have to use my uh, you had to use word of faith of, the, of like my word of. Whatever I say that's gonna happen during the next day, like if it's like gonna be like no video or, or like a mini review or, or, or trailer review or something, like you had to wait until Saturday to see what's gonna happen on Sunday because I can't fit all of it. So, I mean, unless I figure out a way how to, then yeah, of course you're gonna be see you're gonna see all the week. But if I can't, then you're just gonna see um. Monday through it's like Monday or Tuesday through Saturday. I need to look back on it, but it's definitely Sunday's not on there. Sorry, sorry, but Sunday is gonna be the series slash series review, like the full review. That's gonna be on Sunday, if nothing happens to interfere. So, okay, so without further ado, let's get on with the review. Okay, before we get to this um dark part of the night of the springs with the the um, with the trees and stuff, like before we get there, we go um. Where we last left off on episode four, the mid-season finale, um, we had Topher, Wyatt, and Zoe being confronted by this dark figure. And it was like, oh, this is it. We're, we're goners. And then uh, Wyatt, uh, Wyatt's pretty brave. He grabs like a, this this is like an old bunker. He's in a bunker right now, the near the hatch. He just grabbed like an old container of, I'm assuming, processed food or something. And he like threw it. And it ended up in Sam. I was like, oh my goodness, you almost killed Sam. Like, Kind of like uh, okay, how much damage could he actually done? But anyway, and he's like, "Oh, hey, hey, hey!" And like he like turned on the light. He's like, "Wait, hey, relax. Like, I'm not gonna hurt you." Dude, this is like, I was like, "Oh, this is cool." Finally, we are in the second half of the season, and finally, Wyatt and Zoe and Topher are finally meeting, um, uh, Sam. Topher has. I'm sorry. Um, I hit the table. Um. Topher hasn't met Savannah yet. Why only Wyatt and Zoe has that you besides um Sam Griffin Harper because that's season one and season two that they already met, like already been established. But this season established that like the like, you know, like this season introduced the relationship between Savannah, Wyatt, and Zoe. Topher hasn't met her yet. So hopefully that that's soon. I definitely don't want to be like near the end of the season. So either this episode or next episode. If it's like episode seven, I, I would still think it's cool, but I'm like I wish you would have done it earlier. So who knows? Who knows when it's come, gonna come? But I definitely want Topher to meet her. So yeah. So these three, the this um second trio is, is finally meeting Sam. So that's pretty cool. And obviously they're very suspicious. Like what are you doing in our house? It's like what are you doing in our basement? And he's like relax. I'm not gonna hurt you. He's like you're you're and he's like D why? Like kid, put the put the ham down. Like whatever it was. It's like spam or something. And he's like oh so you can suck her souls. And he's like. Huh? He's like, he's, he's so confused. He's like, I'm not going to suck your soul. Like, what the heck? And he's like, wow, you really got a wild imagination. Tover's like, no, it's not imagination. It's called expertise. Because a lot of people in this world, in the real world, um, kind of meld. Like, everyone's, just people in the world who say, like, where does the line draw between expertise and imagination if your expertise is something that's, called non uh, sorry uh, as that's called fiction or science fiction and you really believe so hard in it so like there's some people not me but there's some people in the world it's like where does the where do you draw the line in it so like i i guess so i guess these kids are a part of that that, that group was saying that no everyone keeps saying it's imagination but it's actually expertise and we're actually experts i'm like no okay okay sure you're under 13 sure okay like, I won't get too mad, mad at you about it. But anyway. Um, so, you're confronting Sam. And, it's like, and, and then they mention, like, oh, you appeared out of nowhere. And it's like, yeah. He keeps appearing out of nowhere. And I keep kind of, I, I don't want to say excuse, but I keep running into the thing of, yeah. Which I still believe of he's been on the run so man much in so many years. He just knows how to hide really well. But they did kind of mention, oh, you appeared out of nowhere. And I'm kind of thinking, is something more going on? Maybe. No, no. I, I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on that. But anyway. 
So, and, and then she's like, oh, wait, you didn't come out of nowhere. You came from the hatch, didn't you? You're a time traveler. And he's kind of has a face like, oh, no. And uh, he even looks behind the, the hatch to see if anyone's going to come. And, and, and also seeing, like, like oh, okay, like, they, did these guys, like, use here or something? Like, what, what, what's going on? And we get back to Savannah, Griffin, and Harper. And last time we left them in the mid-season finale, Griffin and Harper went to see Savannah back in the 19, 6, 1962, I believe. And remember what was she said? Like, I believe the ghost is Judge Walker. And we left her cover like, what? And um, and she's basically, they're, they're kind of, you know, like, they're talking. They're outside. It's, you know, it's, it's sunny out. And they're basically talking like, okay, how do you know it's Judge Walker? And it's like, come inside the barn. I, I'm going to show you. And then she opens the barn. And um, I guess she picked up all the money and put it in a wheelbarrow. But she looks at the tarp and it's like, oh, Savannah, where would you get all this money from? And it's like, um, I found it in the basement in the floorboards, and it's like, wait, you did? Yep, with this um newspaper. I'm surprised they didn't mention the color band, but I guess um the date in the year because they're on, on like a time crunch. I guess is more important. So I'm not I'm not mad about it, but I'm just like, oh, that's kind of interesting they didn't mention that. And it's like, oh, 1947. Oh, that's where this money uh, came from. And it's like, yeah, the judge was around that. Year. The, oh, how do you know it was Judge Walker? It's like. I went to 1947 to like check it out because you guys like locked the hatch or like you like I don't know the the the, the hatch got locked and I I just had to go to 1947 myself and I saw it and I saw Judge Walker there and it you know um it is like oh okay that makes sense and it's like it's like, okay but like, we need proof that the money actually came for the judge we said did you see him put in like in the floorboards or in the basement or something he's like no i just found the money afterwards like in this time in the 1960s he's like okay well we need to figure out like why he did it i mean i guess we kind of know why like he's he's a shady judge but like, we need more like more detail basically so they're kind of talking and they basically basically go to 1947 so here we are and you know the door all walking and they're kind of talking it's like Okay, like, like, what's the plan? And, you know, um, and it's like, okay, we are going to go find Judge Walker and we're going to confront him. And then Griffin makes a good point. He's like, wait, so we're just going to confront Judge Walker. And, uh, well, not confront him. We're going to sneak around and see if he just does anything incriminated. That's not a plan. That's half of a plan. That's, that's, a, that's a half-baked plan. And then Savannah's like, you, you have a point, but my... Number one priority right now. That's kind of like an overall priority. My number one big priority right now is to talk to Ruby. I believe she knows something about the judge. And she might be too scared to tell. So I, I need to go find her. And I, I want to play this right here. So, like, yeah, so, um, it, it, like, Harper's like, oh, like, who's Ruby? Like, did you, like, make a new friend or something? And then she's like, Daisy's daughter, so that would make her your great aunt. So, yeah, Harper's gonna be your great aunt. That's so weird. Uh, and then, so, Rip Griffith's like, okay, so, um, where do we find her? And I was like, oh, well, well, the last time I saw her, um, her and Daisy were, basically, they were, like, the maids. They were, like, cleaning, cleaning out, um, hotel rooms and stuff like that. And they were cleaning tables. And it's like, and obviously Harper is really frustrated about that because she's like, what? That can't be right. There's no way that Daisy and her family would ever work for the man that stole our family's land. That's just, that's a mouthful of, of a sentence. A sentence. And uh, Samantha's like, I couldn't believe it either, but I saw it in my own eyes. It's true. And, and, um, like, you know, I was like, oh, like, oh, the local, the local sh sheriff is here. It's probably about the missing money. And we have Judge Walker, and we have the sheriff, and up, uh, and um, and I, I actually could kind of they, they like they know each other, which is pretty cool because they, like back in the day, the owner of hotels and businesses and banks would know the local sheriff, especially if so if the town you're in isn't that big, it makes sense. And um, I guess his name is Emmett, by the way. His name is um Emmett Walker, so Judge Emmett Walker. And he's like, oh, hey, um, um, oh, hey, Judge. He's like, oh, hey, well, what can I do for you, Emmett? And he's like, oh, like, you know, why don't we go into the back patio and, like, oh, the, the kitchen made some beignets just for you. It's your favorite, so we can, like, talk business. And it's like, okay. And so they go to the, bo uh, the box. They go to the back. 
and they're like, well, it's uh, very lucky for Judge Walker like to have the local sheriff as a friend, and yeah, it helps to do shady things. I'm hoping that the sheriff is not corrupt, and he's just an honest guy doing his job, and like that's it. He's not part of the whole money scandal. That's that's that, that's my hope. I hope that sheriff. I hope you're a good guy. I mean. I guess there's like a, two different meanings of being a good guy and also being in the times. Also, like, like I was about to say something, but like you know what? Like I'm I'm gonna be thinking about it too much, so just I'm just gonna move on. But I was thinking like like because did they delve into the whole color ban and like the like, you know and like the whole. Everyone is now like working together like in hotels and stuff like it's just just recent. So I'm just my question is where does the sheriff lie in that? Like how much of a good guy in law enforcement is he? I guess that that, that was the thing I was pointing out. But anyway, so um, so they're basically talking and uh, the, uh, the, so no the walking and we have Emmett and um, the local sheriff. I'm not sure what his name is. Like they, they can't read the badge. And, um, and, uh, I'm with, um, the sheriff. I want a recipe to beignets. It'll be, listen to this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, um, so they're kind of like, ho, ho, ho. And they're kind of, kind of like laughing about. And, um, he, he kind of, points to something i'm gonna bring it up a little later in the episode where he said oh if i revealed the, the recipe to you the missus would kill me which is like a joke in the 40s like, like old timey like, like talk like kind of like um mash and um uh what's it called um and the andy griffith show like, like you know like, like, those type of old type of shows where like, like um not but answer like, that's like way way back but but there's like those two shows to where it's like, oh, like, like, oh, like, if I do that, like, oh, the secret will be out and the missus will kill me. Like, metaphorically speaking. But that, that line right there for this episode, I'm going to go back to it. But, um, but I'm, I'm with the sheriff. I want to, I want a recipe to beignets. Like, come on. And those beignets actually look really good. I think they were like chocolate beignets. I'm not sure if I had chocolate beignets before. I had regular beignets and they were like delicious. But chocolate beignets, put in the, com in the comments below. Has anyone tried chocolate beignets or regular beignets before? Especially chocolate beignets. Have, have any of you tried it? Yes? No? Maybe. And so Savannah and Griffin are gonna go you know, like check for Ruby. They just see where she is. And um um and um Harper sees Griffin's shirt and I, I love this right here. Yeah. Do, do. Yeah, Griffin, like, watch out. Come on. Very cute. So I don't want to play too much of a clip, but um, like, he's like, oh, like, that that concert doesn't start until like fifty years after today. Like, you, like you're gonna you're gonna stand out, and, and also almost kind of like a, what would you do without me? Like, yeah, like t together as a team, they work really well together, and um. And it's also like kind of like a thing through every season. Like Harper kind of wipes off ch uh, chocolate after Griffin's um, face. Um, but like, um, like, you know, like, and she like kind of ruffles his hair, and the like, you know, she she helps his locker open. She's just always there to kind of make sure that he's always kind of. I don't. I um. What what, what do I want to say? Like, always keeps an eye to see he's well dressed. I, I guess for for like the right time period. But Griffin is always. On mission, he doesn't really realize what he's wearing most of the time. There's some to where he does, but most of the time, Harper kind of has to help him. Like, you need to button up your shirt, man. But um, it's very cute. It, even Savannah brings up the seahorses again, which was a thing in episode one, I believe. So now we're bringing up an episode. So yeah, the beginning of the first half of the season is now being brought up again uh, as like a little cute nod in the first half of the second. Oh, sorry, the the the, the first episode of the second half of the season, episode five. So that's pretty cute. Even the Harper's like, Savannah, girl, what are you doing? Like, d d don't, don't do that. And then Savannah's like, oh, well, why don't we just split up in for more ground? And I love Harper has like a, mm-hmm, the type of his, like, yeah, stop talking. 
And then Griffin's like, well, while he's like, but I, I like the continuity of not all the buttons are like finished yet. So Griffin, while talking to Harper, he's finishing up the buttons. I love the continuity. They just, just like leave it right there because they got distracted. Like, no. And he's like, seahorses? And she's like, oh, you, you know, Savannah. Like, like, don't worry about it. <laughs> and uh, they hear like a, Chim! Like, like, like a little sneeze. And like, and both the sheriff and Emmett are like, huh? Like, they almost had like a look at each other like, was that you? Like, what the heck? And, um, this is like a very 40s thing. I, I don't mind it, but this is very obvious. Like, her name's Ruby and she has ruby red slippers. I like the fact that it's not all shiny. That these aren't new shoes. Like, it's kind of dustier. I know, like, the floor is dusty, but I like to think these aren't very expensive shoes. Just because of the situation that they're in. Because if she did have really nice shoes, I'm like... That doesn't really correlate to what, what you're trying to do and the message you're trying to show. So I'm glad that it's not completely shiny shoes. But yeah, like, okay, but like the ruby red slippers, like, no okay. Like, I don't mind it, it's cute, but I'm like, that's a very 40s thing, to be that obvious. And then, like, I love how Harper's like, yep, that's gotta be her. And both, um, they're like, something under the table? And um, and then uh, obviously Griffin's like, oh, that can't be good. And then Griffin's like, and like the, the pretends is it's like him. And then he's like, this is so weird. Griffin and Judge Walker. This is the first time to me. Obviously Griffin's seen him before when he traveled to the nineteen um. I want to say early forties or late thirties. I think it was. It, it was like season two, basically, where Sam was like a little boy, but. And, um, and obviously, um, like, Daisy was in 30. Like, she was, like, teenage years. So, like, that 1930s, I, think I would want to say. But, anyway. Um, so, but Griffin has, like, formerly met Judge Walker. And he's like, oh, what's up, the fuss, son? And he's like, oh, I, 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 I fell into, like, a patch of something out in the springs and near the woods. And he's like, oh, and I love how Harper's kind of like, oh, that's really quick thinking. And, um, you know, and he's like, oh, like, oh, man, that guy... I went to like a place like that once myself, and he's trying to be all hospitable and all that. It's like, oh, it hurts like the dickens, and he's like, oh, do you have anything to make it stop? And he's like, oh, why don't we, why don't you come inside? We'll get to look at it before it spreads. And he's like, oh, okay. And like he sees it again, and he's like, ooh, and and like um, and obviously Emmett's like, oh, sheriff, you make sure you. Find whoever swindled um all those hardworking people out their hard earned money, and like the, and, and then I like how it's kind of like a it, it kind of shows that even though they're friends, Sheriff has a face like this is like the third time you're mentioning it. I, I'm gonna put my people in the first order in the morning. Like, like don't worry. It, I don't want to over exaggerate it, but Sheriff kind of uh, had like a like come on, like like calm down, like like. And he's like, okay, much obliged. Like, the, the, hey, don't forget to enjoy those beignets. And he's like, I always do. And he's like, oh, come on, son. Let's go get get that looked at. And I love this. Ruby like, like, kind of shows the gratitude of a smile. And I love Harper's smile. Like, um, right here. Very cute. So we go back to um, 2024, early 2024, to where... Um, where um we right, right so we, we get back to early twenty twenty four with um Zoe Wyatt and um Topher and Sam where they're kind of talking about it's like oh I wonder what else like, I wonder like you know what else what, uh, sorry um I wonder who else could be a time traveler I always thought the librarian was suspicious and I wonder if she's like a robot like she's like a space bot and even Wyatt has like a look at, at looking at Sam like oh space bot like maybe you could be a space bot and he's like. No space spots. There's no other time travelers. They can't be because I built this time. Ta the, the, there's only one time machine. It's that one, and I built it. And he's like, he oh, oh he revealed the secret. And he's like, you made. Hey everyone. Sorry, like I had to um stop the recording earlier because family came over, was still over, and so I had to stop it. I'm sorry about that, and. And so I'm doing like another recording of the second half of the review. And so when I finish this recording, 
I'm going to merge the two videos together. So there'll be one whole review and hopefully it won't be too convoluted or like, 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 you know, like, like, hopefully you won't see like a breaking point except for me like talking about it with you guys because I like to, I like to show you guys like the behind the scenes like talking about it because like, I don't know, this seems, seems more honest that way. I don't know. But anyway, so hopefully it won't be too weird for you guys. But anyway, nonetheless, let's continue with the review where we, where I left off on the first recording that I did. But anyway, so again, you guys won't see a split, but anyway, okay, so um, we left off with Wyatt, Zoe, and Topher and Sam, where Sam revealed that he's the inventor of the time machine. And so we go from there, where, oh no, no, um, Wyatt notices the time machine, the radio, and it's like flipping through the numbers, it's like, hey, hey what, what's happening? And Sam sees, it says, um, like, what was it, July 9th, um, 1947, it's like, oh, so it seems like someone's traveling to 1947, and we get to Ben going downstairs. He has like a knapsack or something. He he has like a duffel bag, and he's like talking to um when, um no um Jess he says, "Hey Ben, like where are you taking that? Like where are you going?" He's like, "Oh, I need to get these um permits. Uh, I have these permits in the in this bag, and I need to get them filled out for for the kitchen, and like and the permit place is um closed, so I'm gonna." Beat the, I'm gonna beat it to the punch and I'm gonna wait out. I'm gonna sleep out in the truck, like waiting for them to open. And he's like, and Jess is like, you didn't fill it out yet. If an inspector finds out, we're gonna close. Like we're gonna get in trouble. And he's like, yeah, I have a, had a lot in my mind because everything what happened with Sarah, having these visions, what happened in the springs. She said she had a burn on the on, on her ankle. She said the springs were was boiling, and like and she has to have a night terror. So it's just. Ben's really words that had a lot on my mind, and, and, and um, I had a lot on my mind, and, and just like, oh yeah, Sarah, and he's just, just, just discontinues, and he's like, I don't know what I'll do, and this is kind of predicting the future for later in 2024, for when Sarah goes into the psych ward, and Topher goes into, into a coma, things are kind of happening, things are kind of progressing into the future, we kind of seeing it, and we haven't prevented it yet, so, we gotta do something, and like you know, and I love um, Ben Ben's and um, Jess's relationship, their friendship. Is like, please like watch out for her, and Jess is like, of course. So that's pretty cool, and so and obviously um, Ben's like, where have you three been? Because um, Topher, um, Wyatt, and Zoe came from the basement, probably because Sam's like, you guys had to go. Like your parents are gonna be worried, and. They're just like, oh, we were outside. We we're playing. It's like, you were playing outside in the dark? It's like, and like, you know, on why it's like, yeah, it would be pretty ridiculous if we were just, to, it would be pretty hard to play flashlight tag on in, in the day. Because it would just be, Ben's like, tag, like regular tag. He's like, oh, yeah, right. He's like, okay, like, whatever you guys are doing, whatever, just please don't bother your mom. She has already a lot on your plate. She hasn't been feeling well. So just please be on your best behavior. And then Topher just is best. Like, don't worry, I'll keep them out of trouble. And Ben just has like a look on his face. He's just like, okay, I I'm going to go. And, and obviously, uh, the one of the three kids like, run off to, to, to like do something, to, to play nicely, as they say. Ben has a look of a smile on his face. He's like, these are good kids. Even though the mischief is again to trouble, they're good kids. And I love that. That little smile, like, it means everything. So Ben takes his buffle, his um, the buffle bag, the duffel bag, and he heads out to his truck to go to the department place to get the to get the permits filled out. Like, I don't know, I'm not sure where you would go to get that for a hotel. I don't know. Because in the comments below, if you were building a kitchen in your house to get permits signed, filled for that, to, to to get assigned so like leased for that, would it be the same to get? The kitchen in the hotel you're owning to get permits then for that? Like, is a kitchen in your house and the kitchen of a hotel that you own, would it be the same permits? Or would it be slightly different permits? Hmm. I'm probably the first person to ask that question for this episode. I'm probably, probably, but I, I don't care. I want that question answered. Anyway, um... 
So we we got that going on. So Ben's at the house, and for it was for for the rest of the episode actually. And um, we kept Sarah, and she's like, in the basement, and I guess she's like packing some boxes, just trying to live normally. And she's hearing all these voices, well, like, whispers really in in her head, and she's kind of like freaking out. And they are not really freaking out, but she's mostly kind of like stop it, stop it. And we cut away from that, and we get to um, where where do we go? We over we go back to nineteen forties where um Griffin is getting some. Remember he said like oh I fell into like a bush of like poison ivy and out in the woods. So someone's kind of giving him like an antidote, like some sort of itching cream, like an old fashioned itching cream. And um and it's Daisy and we go oh like oh, Griffin's like oh dude, this, this thing reeks like, like like you know, um like can you just pretend to, to put it on? It's like she's like no Griffin this is my job. If the judge asked me to put this on your arm, I'm gonna do it. And it's like, and um, and, and she's like, Griffin, you shouldn't be here. And it's like Daisy, no, you shouldn't be here. And they're kind of have like a back and forth. But obviously, Daisy's glad to see him because they're, they're friends. But no, you're gonna, you're gonna get me in trouble. You're gonna get my daughter in trouble. You're gonna get yourself in trouble. Like, gotta get out now. You won't want to finish putting this on your fake poison ivy burn. Like, you gotta get out of here. And um. And she and the and is like like oh the, the, dude, you're, you're getting me worried. Is you have to leave? I'll leave when you answer my questions. Just answer my questions. And it's like and it's like, like and the, you you don't understand that like what your daughter is into. And obviously she's getting worried worried about like like oh we mentioned Ruby and it's like like she was in a pickle basically. She was in a jam. She was about to get into trouble. And she and obviously Daisy it was pretty rude to cut Griffin off. But I understand this is her daughter. This is, this is in very dangerous times right now. She's obviously really worried. She's a worried mom. And she's like, Griffin, I cannot let you and Savannah and Harper to bring my daughter Ruby into whatever crazy adventure y'all are on right now. I love that she said y'all. She's very southern. It's like, you guys need to leave. And obviously the Judge Walker kind of comes in. They stop talking. And um, she's like, and he's like, oh, how's the um itch, son? He's like, oh, the like you know, the ointment like helps, and the the, the, the you know the itching is basically gone now thanks to Daisy. And I, I love that because Daisy smiles. Like oh, like for the past who knows how many years, this is the first person who thanked me. It's especially like a white person, like a white kid that like, thanked me basically. And that's really nice. She appreciates that. Obviously, she can't say anything, but she smiles, and I I love that. And um, George Walker, like, oh, don't. Don't, um, like, thank the help, basically. And obviously her smile just, like, frowns immediately. <laughs> George Walker, why you have to say anything? And, like, oh, don't thank the help. The missus, like, the, his wife created that recipe. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. I'm always interested in people who invent things. Even if it's, like, their own version of something has already been invented, like, their own recipe, I'm always kind of curious about that. saying, oh, her, his wife invented this. Hmm. It, it's kind of like, I guess, spoilers for um, Harry Potter. I, I'm not sure which book it was confirmed or when, when it was mentioned, but Harry Potter's father, James Potter, invented the Saliki's hair potion hair gel, I think it was. Oh, no, sorry. It was either his dad or Harry's grandfather. I forgot which one. But in Harry's family, created the, it's basically like a hair gel potion. It makes like the Potters famous, like more than already they become famous later on because of Harry. But um, so I'm always interested. Like, oh, your grandfather invented the hair potion? Hmm. So when I always hear that like you're like the inventor or something, I'm like, hmm, that's really interesting. It, like, let me let, let me just jot that down in my head. I think that's pretty cool. And so they like, like oh you know they like, don't thank the help and obviously he's very slimy, very mean. And it's like oh the like you know like. Oh, and I, I just hate I hate this line, but it's so in tune with this character, in tuned with, with this character. And we say, like, okay, girl, break time's over. And obviously she puts away the cream and like the little tin can and she just walks away. And um, and before I get to Emmett, you know, Judge Walker, like talking to um, Griffin about like, don't go into, into the woods again because you'll find something more dangerous than poison ivy. I just want to say that line of like, oh, your break is over. I'm like, 
Her job is basically be the maid and clear clear out the tables and wash the windows and doing stuff like that. And her break is obviously she was very glad to help out Griffin out there any way she can. Also obviously to tell him to stay away from danger. She's glad that she did it. But her break is to put on put ointment on people. That's not an actual break. That's still work. I, I just hate that so much. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's her break? Like, no, it's not. Maybe this time technically it was because Griffin is a friend, but no. But um, anyway, so he, he's like, oh, like, like, oh, beware, like the woods and stuff like that. And Griffin's like, oh yeah, don't worry, I'll keep that in mind. He's like, be, be sure you will. And he leaves, and Griffin basically leaves after him. And uh, we basically cut to um, Harper talking to Ruby. And I, I'm sorry, I might have some scenes like kind of out of order. I'm sorry about that. But Harper basically meets Ruby where. Um, like, where uh, Ruby said, like, oh, the you and that boy, the, 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 you know, like, um, we don't really have like friendly one of them, like, around these parts, the, because uh, basically saying he's a white boy, like, he's like, oh, yeah, like, oh, Griffin, like, he's my friend, that they were, we are from a place where he's very he ahead of the times, and people are more nice and more accepting, and they like, go way ahead of the times, basically saying that they're like from the future, but saying indirectly. And he's like, oh, you guys must be from up north. And they're like, she's like, something like that. Because Griffin used to be from Chicago. And that's way more north than Louisiana. So technically, Griffin was from the north. Technically. Technically. But Harper has been from the south. South from all her life. South. And he's like, oh, you're in the north. Like, stuff, something like that. And he's like, oh, like, that must explain it. Like, oh, like, you know, we don't really have, like, you know, like, you know one of them, like, like, friendly, like, around here. They're always mean. You know, they're very discriminative and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, like, you know, why are you interested in George Walker? He's like, oh, we, we know he's up to no good. And he's like, like yeah, like, I, I'm trying to prove the, 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 the catch him in the act so he can finally get away. Even if we don't own land, which I would love if our family owned this land. Um, like I, I don't want him in charge here. Even if it was someone else, I don't want Judge Walker to. Because even if he is a rich and powerful white man who is against basically her people in, 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 in every sense of the word, he's also the man who tricked Ruby's grandfather, the way basically did Daisy's father, to sign the land over to him. Like, that was not part of the deal, and basically, George Walker just swindled, um, I forgot his name, Isaiah? Uh, was that his name? That that was Stacy's father, Isaiah? Yeah. Isaiah's land away. So, not only he's a rich and powerful white man who is against her, their people, basically, they're talking about, um, Ruby, um, Sam, Daisy, and Harper, like, their people, essentially, um, He's also the person who directly swindled the land away from Isaiah. So, like, even if it's someone else, as long as it's not Judge Walker, I, I don't want him here. I don't want him to own the land. Because he even mentioned to Griffin, oh, the Tremont is going to be this land's leg, this town's legacy, even mine. And Daisy was just, like, it's like having, like, a monologue inside her head. Like, we don't hear it, but I bet she just wants to scream at Judge Walker. Because, um, because Griffin said, oh, I bet you have some plans for the Tremont. Sorry, I forgot about that land, but kind of talking about this, I was like, oh right, I forgot he said that. The Tremont is going to be this land's legacy along with my own. And I'm like, shouldn't be. It's probably going to be, but shouldn't be. But, um, so they're basically talking and then, um, they meet up with, um, Savannah and, um, Griffin and they're basically saying like, oh, like, hey, and, and she's like, oh, like, you really got me out of the jam there, like, uh, Griffin, I think your name is, right? He's like, yeah, I'm Griffin, oh, hi, I'm Ruby, like, thank you so much, and he's like, anytime, like, yeah, of course, and she smiles, and like, oh, like, he's a very nice boy, it's not fake or anything, nice. So they're basically talking, and, um, oh, I keep forgetting scenes, before Savannah meets with Griffin, Oh, before Savannah and Griffin meet up with, um, Harper and Ruby, Savannah goes that down in the basement to... See, to follow Judge Walker, um, and basically Judge Walker, this is where he hides the money in the floorboards. I'm like, oh, and Savannah's obviously hiding what he does in the, uh, hides in the act, and the, and basically, she uh, he doesn't like goes up, he goes up the stairs because 
he put the floorboard back in place and then he goes back upstairs and Savannah removed the carpet and then he she, and then she picks up like a like a sack of a hundred bills he forgot to put in the floorboards but it's, the rugs are kind of hiding it and she, she's like thank you Judge Walker like you have the evidence plain sight and the you know she puts the money back to where it was under the rug and then he she just carefully goes up the stairs this is where they meet up basically like back in on the on the patio and um. Wait, so, so, so basically, Savannah's like, yeah, remember the money I told, told you about? Like, yeah, I saw George Walker put it under the floorboards. Remember the floorboards I said that I saw earlier where, where I saw a bunch of hundreds of bills? Yeah, George Walker confirmed Emmett Walker sold the money. And the officer would be like, I knew it. That man was up to no good. I told you. I told you. And now I know what I had to do to stop him. And we were like, did, did Ruby kill Emmett Walker? Did she do it? I'm like, maybe. When I first watched the episode, I'm like, did Ruby do it? A child? Oh, man. Like, that, that, that is so many emotions. It's like, yeah, I don't want him around here. But killing, I'm a person that says killing is never good. Unless we're talking about something like in Marvel. Like something like, or DC, like Dark Side or Thanos or something like that. Where I'm like, you kind of don't have a choice in the matter. Like, it's kind of like a you are that person type of situation but in any other case i'm like killing is not okay i'm like oh ruby did you do it because we know judge walker dies we we know that we know that i'm like did ruby do it or it's a setup i don't know we, 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 we have to find out but we we're like, oh ruby don't, don't no no don't do that and we cut to back to the um uh, we to present basically 2024 earlier um, and we have Sarah in, like, the barn, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what she's doing, I think she might be packing more boxes or something, I, I'm not sure, but, um, and obviously we have, like, the you know, like, um, obviously George Walker's ghost, the ghost, and he's, like, tormenting her, and then she's covering her ears, and then, she, and then like, basically, um, she basically, the barn the doors just open, and she screams, and she just runs out of there, and it's like, who opened the doors? Oh, Sam. Hooray, Sam. And he closes the barn doors and he's like, okay. The, the, okay, go. So, like, come on. Like, show yourself. And he's like, okay. But he's, he's, he's like the black mist or whatever. And he's, he's like, okay. You want to have a standoff? Leave her out of this and leave the kids alone. Like, come at me. Like, come at me. And then George Walker just... Poof, like Sam against like the barn door and he's like oh like it, it hurt him and then obviously Judge Walker just kind of disappeared like haha like I defeated you <laughs> and he's just like oh, well that didn't work and, uh, obviously Sam's kind of running out of ideas so like let me just fight him let me fight him fist physically like fist fist obviously that, that didn't work that didn't work Sam come on and um uh let's see Oh, oh, wait, wait. So they can't find Ruby. So Savannah, Griffin, and Harper, they travel back to 2024. And this is where they meet up with Sam. He's like, what about the quick trip we talked about, guys? To figure out what happened? The, 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 you know, remember they were going through like hotel um, books and the, the different names and stuff like that? Remember the person we were trying to find? He's like, oh, you went a detour to 1947? Like, well, why'd you do that? He's like, the ghost is Judge Walker, Sam. And he's like, the judge? And obviously Sam's really mad, but he's also like, it all makes sense now. Like, it kind of does. And, you know, they, they kind of talk about it. It's like, okay, we'll, we'll talk about this later. But, Sarah, but, but Savannah, your mom is going to be worried. You need to go back home. And she's like, I can't go back home. It's like, Savannah, we're going to still keep you in the loop. This isn't going to be solved overnight. Like, yeah, like I totally agree. We have, we have three more episodes left. <laughs> After this one, we have three more. And it's like, like we're not going to solve this overnight. You need to go home. And he's, she's there, and her aunt's like, okay, fine. And obviously Sam's like, oh, man. This is kind of like her daughter, like Sasha Nace or whatever. So he's like, he really cares about her. He's like, oh, my goodness, like, I feel like a dad. I never wanted to be a dad. <laughs> But this girl just fell into my lap. What am I going to do? I, I want to send her to her mom. I know she wants to help, but mm, she keeps getting into trouble. And obviously, they go, they go, they go, Sam, don't worry about her. Like, you guys, 
like you know stay out of trouble like okay <laughs> um but uh but um, the, you know, um, obviously, like Sam, like kind of, like, like go somewhere to, to kind of like you know, um, keep things in check with the house, make sure Sarah's okay and like stuff like that, because he's really good at hiding, and we have um Griffin and um, um, oh wait, oh no no no, so, sorry, no Sam was kind of like like, like you make sure that she was, uh, so Sam was making sure Savannah like went home. A bit, but he was like playing like nineteen sixty um two, and while Griffin and Harper were kind of talking, the like you know like um. Oh right, sorry, like, sorry, like uh, the, the memories are coming back to me of the, of the episode. Um, so Sam was kind of playing nineteen sixty two, and assuming like Savannah went home, Griffin and Harper went out of the basement to go to their room to to like investigate more of like when George Walker might have died or disappeared or whatever and when Harper said oh we need to use your laptop and he said oh yeah sure and then he just sees his mom in such desperate state and like like she she just looks so frail and so scared and Griffin just like he really cares about his mom like Ben was like season one was Ben's season season three is like Sarah's season like like, uh, like season two was kind of both of their season but season three was really Sarah and Griffin just just like Griffin wanted to help his dad, he really wants to help his mom. Where he's like, okay, like my my like, hey Harper, I don't know this is important. My my laptop is on my desk, like you know where it is. I I need a few minutes with my mom, and she's like, of course, yes, please, as long as you can. They they really care about each other, and uh, and you know Griffin's like kind of like, like okay like 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 uh, are right, like, kind of like a pan shoulder kind of, and then he he just kind of without knocking uh, Sarah's like. He's like, oh, mom, sorry, I, I, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm so sorry. And he, she's like, it's fine. Like, like, oh, Griffin, what are you doing? He's like, I wanted to make sure you're okay. You really scared me at the picnic. We were happened by the springs. You said like the water was boiling. I, I wanted to make sure you were okay. And he, and obviously she was really grateful. They're like, Griffin, I'm fine. It's like, are, are you sure that you're fine? Because obviously Griffin knows in the future she's not going to be fine. I need to make sure you're okay. But yeah, I really care about you. I love you. And obviously, she's like, you wouldn't believe me. You're like, it, this is going to sound crazy. And obviously, Griffin's like, no, we're crazy. This is going to lead to one thing in the future. And that's the psych ward to, to the mental hospital. He's, he doesn't want that. And he just like, mom, you're not crazy. A a anything, you, you are not crazy. If you had something to tell me, I'm going to believe you no matter what. I, I just love that. The relationship, I, I love it. And she's about to say something, but he's like, no, Griffin, it's fine. Just... Be, be just I'm just tired like don't worry and he's like obviously he doesn't want to press on the matter too much he's just like okay he just walks away sadly and um we, we start covering her ears and like why she's doing that is because when Griffin leaves and we, we see Sarah in a moment a so little second moment piece the voices come back and that's why she was covering her ears and she had, just has that scared look on her face again and I'm just oh even a second in peace, George Walker just wants to torment her. It has to be part of her family, right? It has to be, because and that kind of reminds me of a scene when, when um the, the when um Harper, Ruby, Savannah, and Griffin met up met up, um they they're like oh they the like, oh, what's the smell and so, so Savannah's like don't look at me and because Griffin's like oh, um Mrs. Walker like the, the judge's wife like, like has this ointment that swears to cure all of um itchness and it, it actually smells like um uh, my mom's recipe for curing chicken pox actually um and i'm like i'm kind of suspecting something to do with sarah i'm really suspecting now because we had the line earlier of um george walker said like oh like, like if i t told you the secret about her beignet recipe the missus will kill me and then we have this ointment that's kind of in the same family saying like this is a, a very similar smell and look to the ointment that my mom uses to cure me of chicken pox and again why and so yeah, I'm assuming also and also this ghost is really targeting Sarah like it has to be in her side of the family and also because we kind of spent with um Ben's side of the family with his father and Ben when he was younger and Ben's friend was Savannah and Jess, like, 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 you know, 
how that was a big focus in season one and kind of season two, a little bit, mostly season one. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, so right, so since that was a big focus in season one, we don't know anything about um Sarah's um parents or grandparents or whatever. Like we don't really know anything. So. I'm really suspecting that that is that's in her side of the family because of those just hints. I could be wrong, but I, I'm really highly suspecting. But I don't know. In the comments, what, what do you think? Like, is this some something? It was it was it someone in on Sarah's side of the family that that killed Judge Walker? Maybe who knows? It could have been his wife, but I need to know more information about her because all we know is his hints. Like, I don't, don't want to make a big assumption like that. I'm really 90% I'm sure it's in, it's in her family. But was it her? Maybe. Like, I, I need more information. I need more. But anyway, so we, um, right, so where I left off before I went to the other, before scene um, was um, Sarah closing her ears again. And so we have um, Harper and Griffin doing research on the laptop. And they say, oh, this is the date where the judge disappeared. I guess supposedly died. And look, it's tomorrow of this year. Because it's like Friday, like 17th of 1749 or something. And that's going to be tomorrow. So the judge dies tonight. We, 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 need, we need to make sure it's like not Ruby or stop Ruby. And basically it's like, oh, we know Ruby's as a kid. Like, 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 like you know, like she's not going to do that. And, um... And, and, and it, um, basically Harper's like, oh, but she's a child, but that's very determined. And even uh, Griffin made a point to say, they go, wow, you, you have a very long line of very strong women with, that are determined. And I love how Harper's like, yeah, I'm afraid that's going to be a bad thing this time. Because she doesn't want Ruby to kill the judge. Because one, is it not only going to put a target on her and her family? Two, it's not okay to kill. And I, 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 I believe Harper has a no kill code. I like to believe that. And obviously, is a, we don't know for sure that there's going to be Ruby or not. So let's, let's go back in time and let's go figure this out. And as we're kind of talking, we have Wyatt, Zoe, and um, Topher kind of listening on. We need to go back to the 40s to, like, like you know, kind of um, see what's happening. So the future in 2024 um, the, the, the doesn't happen. The horrible future. Like, come on. There's no time to lose. And Griff, uh, not Griffin, um, Griffin and Harper put in the time machine, the, the coordinates, and they go off to the past. And we have Harp, uh, not Harper, Topher, Wyatt, and Zoe put 2014, the layer this year, basically. I'm sorry, 2024, I mean. Um, and he's like, why are we going to 2024 again? He's like, there is a secret they're not telling us. Like, lives are at stake. They need our help. Like we, we need to figure this out. So they go into um, the future and they go and we see Savannah kinda hiding out there and obviously she doesn't want those three to get into trouble, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go help them out. And um and we have to continue continue with the storyline where um Topher, um, Wyatt and Zoe are in the future and obviously Savannah's like, You guys, like you shouldn't be here and obviously Topher's like, Ah and Cool, this is the first time Topher's meeting Savannah fully. So I was thinking, because I was kind of saying earlier in the episode, in the review, where I was like, I want it to either be this episode or episode 6. Like, not episode 7 or 4, because I feel like it would be, like, too late. It's going to be this episode. Okay, great, cool. So everyone's met everybody, except for the parents. It's, I, I want it to happen. Is it going to happen? I'm kind of losing hope, but I want it to happen. But anyway. Um, so, right, so, we just have, um, then, it's like, it's like and obviously, Tover, calm down, like, she's not a ghost, remember? It's like, oh, right, sorry, like, you really scared me. It's like, what are you doing here in the future, Savannah? Like, why aren't you back in the 60s with, 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 the 60s with, with your mom? It's because you guys shouldn't be here. You've seen enough of the future. Like, what are you doing? It's like, something bad happened here. Like, like, like we, we need to, like, figure this out. And obviously, Savannah was going to press against it but they hear a door open like oh we need to hide and we have harper here with topher obviously to savannah she's like 
cool, her Topher is like not in a coma. Obviously, she, just, she doesn't say it out loud, but she, the look on her face, she's like, okay, Topher's okay. Okay, good. But we have Harper so upset, and Topher brought her flowers, so that's how we know that Topher's okay. And they tell him we miss him, and I'm like, oh, she's talking about like her, her dad? And But then I remember something in the trailer, but I won't say anything this episode until we actually get to the gravestone. But if you remember from the trailer, you, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah. And I'll say, like, oh, where is she going? Like, why is Harper so upset? And obviously, Topher's like, oh, she must be going to see my dad. He's like, but why would Harper be so upset about it now? Like, she isn't, like, she isn't upset now as she is as upset here, like, in the future. So I'm like, like, that doesn't really make any sense. Obviously, you can still be sad about something, like, you missed, even if it was years ago. But something about this moment right here, it feels like it's recent. So, like, what's going on? Like, it could be her dad, but I'm like, is it? So they, um, so the Savannah's like, yeah, like, I want to make sure that, 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 that Harper's okay. That, that, well, like, to see if she's okay. Like, like well, 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 where she's going. To make sure that she doesn't do anything drastic or whatever. And obviously, so she, like, like you know, the ghost follows her. She wants to make sure she's okay. And obviously, um, Zoe's like, I guess we're not going home then. And so they follow after her. And they, they basically see her at a, a gravestone. And I'm assuming she talked to him before they arrived. And so they don't um, ruin the grand reveal, basically. So I'm assuming she talked to the gravestone before they got there. And obviously, she kind of kisses the gravestone like, with her hand. And um, she leaves, like, like you know, tearing. Uh, like, like, you know, she has tears. And obviously, they wait for her to, to, to you know, go away. And they remove the flowers, and it says Griffin Campbell dies in 2024. And like that was from the trailer because when I first saw that, I was like, "What?" A lot of the fan base was oh, sorry about that. A lot of the fan base was really shocked and surprised. Like, what Griffin dies? Are they gonna fix it? And what? Like, what the heck? And like the, the and like uh, and, like stuff with Topher and like everyone was like so like going crazy the uh, like the fandom and the fandom isn't that big as I, I would like it to be, but the fandom of what it does have. It was going ballistic, like, let me tell you. Well, when it first arrived in the trailers, that was, like, I don't know how many years ago. Um, so, um, yeah. So, and they're, like, Griffin, obviously, they're very sad, and they're very shocked. Like, what the heck? And, and um, we get to Griffin and Harper in the 1940s, 1947, and they go upstairs and they, they, we, we hear they hear something in, in like going into two exiting 205 open the door so they go into like another room kind of in like the hallway kind of room 205 is over here so they're like over here in like a long hallway in another room and they'll see ruby, ruby leave i'm like oh my goodness ruby did it didn't she and they open the door and they see judge walker dead and and they're like oh no ruby what did you do and boom Oh, wait, so, so, no, 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 so, sorry, so, sorry, that's not the end of the episode. I'm so sorry, sorry about that. We actually get back to the present where Sarah, for the first time, is fighting against the ghost, Judge Walker. And I'm like, awesome. That's that's really cool. And it obviously, like, she's like, like, oh, like, where are you? Like, like, go away. Like, you can't hurt me. And, like, you can't scare me anymore. And it, this is the first time he talks where he's like, oh, you should be very afraid of me and throws a lamp at her. I'm like, and the fear's back on. Like, She's scared, and obviously that's what he wants, and boom, that's the end of the episode. Oh, hey, everybody. Um, okay. Turns out I'm going to have to edit together three videos, because I think I mentioned before, family is over and stuff like that. So, but this is at the very, 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 very end of the review, so it's not that bad this time. But anyway, okay. So, um, where do I leave off? Um, wait, I said, like, I s mentioned that it was at the end of the episode, so, or I wanted to mention that, I want to mention again that, um, oh, I sorry, I want to remind you guys that I now do timestamps, so, in the beginning of the review, that was not the review, it would be the intro, the actual review is the review, and this portion right here is the like, um, this is what's going to come next for Secret Sulfur Springs for episode 6, basically. So, um, yeah. Okay. So.
so we have Topher, Wyatt, Zoe, and Savannah still in shock about Griffin, Steph, and Harper going to his grave. We have Judge Walker, you know, the young being the ghost, causing more mayhem. We have um, Topher, Wyatt, and Zoe going to this um, bayou, or the, the, this like hut, to find this person that deals with supernatural matters. Obviously, Wyatt's scared. He's saying we should turn back, and then Zoe said, no, we should move forward. We have um, Griffin and Harper. They said, like, oh, we need to confront Ruby about killing George Walker, and then, um, um, obviously Griffin makes a good point where he's like, we don't know for sure that Ruby killed him. He could, she could have just walked in and they saw his dead body and then ran out. Like, they could have just all happened. And, obviously Harper's like, mm, I don't know. And, um, yeah, that, that's all we get. So, okay, everyone. Um, let's see, what do I give this episode? Mmm. Sam was a little careless by telling um, Topher, Wyatt, and Zoe about the time machine. Like, like, he just right out and said it. Like, he was, he's usually really good at keeping secrets unless he really wants to reveal it. And then he just said it. And I'm like, I don't know. That that felt a little off now looking, looking back at it now. I said before I didn't mind the Ruby Rip Slipper, so I'm not going to count that as a like, closing off. That, that's fine. So, let's see. Where's that? And even Savannah's hiding place, I, I, I thought that was really believable. I'm sorry, I'm just looking back on things to see if, it, like, do I count that as, like, a, like, that's not really possible. Like, oh, that doesn't really make any sense. Uh, even Ben with the permits, her, him being worried about Sarah, like, totally distracting him, him worried about other things. The premise slipping his mind, that's a totally realistic thing. So, and uh, like, um, and Jess, I don't think she did anything wrong. And the kids, I thought they were great. Like, even Harper, the future Harper, um, the like, crying at Griffin's grave, I thought that was very realistic too. That was really great. That's uh, very sad, but very great. Very relieve, uh, believable and relatable. So, that's, that's the Sam thing. The only thing so far, even like Sam trying to fight the ghost, Sam was running out of ideas. So, that makes, even though it was kind of dumb to just throw yourself at the ghost just to do a fist to fist fight. Sam was kind of running ideas at that point, so it makes sense why he would do that. Even Sarah trying to fight the ghost, being the first time being brave. So, is that it? Oh, wait, no. I know Savannah wanted to help, but Savannah stayed behind and said, because her mom's going to be worried again. And Savannah didn't go back home. So, those would be two things. Okay, so I give this episode a 9 out of 10. Yep, 90%. It was fantastic, except for those two things. And, um, yeah. So, everyone, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell. Give me a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to check out my mini reviews and my community posts. And I will see you guys tomorrow for my review for Secrets of Sulphur Springs, Season 3, Episode 6. And I will see you guys tomorrow for that. Okay. Bye.